Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to The Toast and happy Monday, squirrel friends. Speaking of swirly, girly, twirly gumdrops, welcome to my co-host, my sister, my partner in crime, it's Jacqueline Follet. My PIC. I like kind of hate that like acronym. Okay, but do you like what it stands for, partner in crime? I don't think there's a better way to describe us. Really, we're extremely law-abiding and we're not really partners in crime, we're partners in business. And we're actually more so like life partners. We are life partners, but we are partners in crime, Claudia, because we're so funny, it's criminal. Well, that's for damn sure. <laughs> it should be illegal making podcasts as good as these. It's good. Wait, I'm telling you I'm kind of in like my celebrity era. Explain. I saw another celebrity walking to work today. Oh, you're not the celebrity? Am I ever? Well, when you say you're in your celebrity era, I didn't think it was going to be that. As decentralized okay, now, as that. Now that I hear, I hear it back, yeah, it does sound like I'm in like kind of like a famous era. But we all know that's never going to happen. So I am in my sort of attracting celebrities. No, how do I say it? Seeing celebrities. How's that? Seeing celebrities. OK, who'd you see? And I feel like you're actually going to be jealous of this one. Ooh, it takes a lot. I Because I don't like to see celebrities. One thing about me. I don't want to see them. I don't want to know them. I want to know them from a distance. No, it definitely ruins the magic for sure. Who'd you see? And I, it's, you know, when you see like a celebrity doing something so human, like she couldn't find her Uber. Like it was so pedestrian, you know? Yeah. Maybe it wasn't an Uber. Maybe it was a car service, but they were waiting outside. They couldn't find it. And don't, like, think, don't you're supposed to have people for that when you're at a certain level. Exactly. You're and supposed to walk out the door and the car is waiting. And I believe her man was with her, but his back was towards me the whole time. So it really could have been anyone. But like, I just assumed it was her man. Who? Olivia Colpo? No, no. So this is somebody you really like, like. Um, they're on television. Uh, I'm trying to think of like an iconic line. This Are they on television every day? No, 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 no. In a themselves capacity or in a role? In themselves capacity, they are, you know, from your, well, I don't know if they're from, but they're known for living in your home state. Which is New York, right? Oh, sorry. Your current home state. Oh, okay. Um, okay, this is boring. It was Larson wait. Pippen. Oh, that would have been fun to keep guessing. I don't know if I ever would have gotten there. I was thinking more of like a Hoda category. Yeah, no, I could tell you because they were on TV every day. I could tell you were so far that I didn't want to torture the people being like, oh my God, who are they talking about? I just feel like the only celebrities who are up in Adam early in the day who are on TV every morning are like the Kellys, the Clarkson and Ripa variety. Yeah. Hoda, Jenna, and of course a woman. Yeah, I think you said a woman anyway. I did, I did. Well, we happen, our current studio happens to be right next door to like a big celeb hotspot. Whenever I walk past it, I always turn my head. Oh, that restaurant? Yes. So I'm always like turning my head, you know, craning, rubbernecking, if you will. And by the way, I'm not the only one. Every time I walk past it, it's, there's like a crowd of people. It's like slow. I'm like, everybody move. That's so funny. We actually are in a fabulous part of town. For sure, no. And there's this sort of, you know, and these hotspots, they come and go. So right now that hotspot's having its era, you know, it might not in a few months. That's how, you know, hospitality works. Yeah. Well, that's cool that you saw Larsa. How did she seem? You know, she looked different. She looked good. She She's looked happy. She's the headlines a lot. I don't keep up with her daily machinations. Comings and goings. But they're always breaking up and getting back together. But you're saying they were together? Well, the thing is, I'm not 100% sure it was him because I only saw him from the back. But he was standing like, you know, a partner would. But it could have been someone else. Like, I don't know. And I, I too, don't keep up with the machinations of Larsa and, and uh, Michael Jordan's son. But last I heard, they broke up. And then last I heard, it was for publicity and they're, like, getting back together. I kind of feel like they're endgame. Don't quote me on that. We won't. <laughs> we won't. <laughs> But they're kind of giving Endgame to me. I just feel like they love each other. Okay. Hot well, take of the day. It wouldn't be an episode of The Toast if Jackie didn't say, like, the craziest things, you know? For sure. But I am due for some justice, which will come to me in the first story. Because our first big story of the day that broke right as we wrapped Ugh. and we were looking for a fifth story on Friday. We literally did four stories. It was like we were, we, we kind of sort of, manifested the fifth yeah like premonition vibes yeah and that will be our first story is kate middleton's announcement and diagnosis and i bet a lot of you are feeling f quite foolish i'm gonna be real with you we look like clowns yeah you and i include myself clowns. i definitely got involved not to the level of other people but it was you know conspiracy theories are a slippery slope it doesn't take a lot to get you sort of 
radicalized. So I, I wasn't as bad as other people, but I definitely was a part of it. And I own my, I, I can, I'm woman enough to admit when I'm wrong. And it's so rare that it's not a big deal for me. And this, I'm wrong. I said it, I'm wrong. I was wrong about Taylor and Travis dating. That was the last time I was wrong. I was wrong again. She just got caught up in an internet whirlpool. And I don't blame her. I think that was really hard to resist on TikTok. But the people on Real still have our heads about them, even though there's one lady who was like about the truth about Kate Middleton, part 16. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, someone sent me one of her videos and it was like part one. So I was like, oh, okay. And I watched it. Maybe and she was like, part two. She was like, watch two for more. So I go to part two and I see her page. She's literally up to part 30. Yeah, I do want to say TikTok is the most moronic place on the planet. I don't feel like TikTok radicalized me. Twitter did. Mm. I just want to say, I think that's worth mentioning. Okay, well, we will get into all of that when we get into the stories. Before we do, we need to catch up about our weekends. How was your weekend, La? My weekend was kind of incredible. I did all of the things. I feel like I checked every box. You know, on Friday night, I saw Brian and Taylor. We went out for dinner. It's like the, you know, kind of cool new hot spot. It was called Coco Duck. It's like a completely chicken-based nugget, chicken nugget-based restaurant. Like every part of the menu had chicken nuggets on it. But it's fancy? Extremely, like chicken nuggets and caviar. Yum. It's like this famous restaurant tour. It's like his new spot. And Ben and Brian were like, should we go to Coco Doc? I'm like, how does everybody know this place? It was so good. What did Ben eat? So um, I'm, I feel like Ben is going to tell his truth. Okay. It's not for you to podcast. say. It's not for me to say. And it's not for me to judge, you know? For sure. Um, I did, you know, tell the waitress that I was on Weight Watchers. Like, I can't stop telling people. But also, like, I needed help. And she was... So helpful. And she actually explained to me like their chicken is fried in like really good oil. It's like not terrible. So I had a little, I had a little fried chicken and I was so good the whole day. So I saved my points for dinner. I love that. Points girl. My whole, my whole weekend was like really like point centric. I, it was just like points, points, points. I was counting just points. Like counting points the whole weekend. But then Ben and I worked out. We had like a lazy day on Saturday. It was raining. I feel like I hit everything I was supposed to do on the weekend. Like Sunday was very wellness. We went to the grocery store, the kosher mart. We worked out. Saturday, we just chilled. Saturday night, we went to the movies. And you saw a beautiful movie that I had been trying to talk about on the toast. I didn't even know how it came you? out. Yeah, I, I spoke about the movie like a few months ago that it was coming out about the Jewish Nicholas Schindler. Winton. The Schindler of Kids. But he wasn't Jewish. No, sorry, Schindler of Kids. Schindler of Kids, yeah. Nicholas Winton, who was this guy who like only later in life did he get the recognition for saving over 600 kids from Prague who were Jewish refugees and he brought them over to England like right before Hitler invaded. Um, it was such a good movie. Anthony Hopkins was amazing. You know who's a queen? Like, and I was in the movie theater thinking, I'm like, you're a queen. Who? What's her name? She is from The Crown. She played older uh, party girl Aunt Margaret. Princess Helena Margaret. Bonham Carter. Bonham Carter. She's such a good actress. And like, she's just that bitch, you know? She was so good in the movie. I was like, yes, queen. What was the movie called? One Life? One Life. Because I remember the conversation. We couldn't figure out what the movie was going to be called. And there was like a something. They said it was going to be called something that sounded like a bad movie title. Yeah. But then we got to the root of it. and It was called One Life, which is a good movie title. It's a good movie title also because it's referencing a famous verse from the Talmud, which is to yeah. save one life is to save a thousand. And he saved 600. Oh, and what was really cool, I don't want to spoil the movie. It's not a spoiler. But they did like, you know, at the end of the movie, my favorite part of history yeah. movies, the black and white text. Mm -hmm. So they said, um, you know, it's estimated that of this, I think it was 669 children that he saved. There are 6,000 people alive today because of it. And some of them were extras in the movie, just like random descendants, old, so young. Cute. So cute. It was really well done. And it was, um, you know, it made me sad. Like the only other people in the theater were like totally 100 year old Jewish people. Like it was me and Ben were so out of place. Every single person was like your bubby. Like it was, well, a, it was a nursery, not nursery, a nursing home sign out. Y use your platform, get people to go see it. It was really good. It was called One Life. It was an, oh, and by the way, you know why I loved it? An hour and 30 minutes. Thank you. Yeah. The fountain soda machine at my theater was broken. And it's been broken for years. And like, I'm thinking about writing a letter. Or getting a new theater. No, no. I like this theater. Money you talks, know? Turdy. It's true. I should take my business elsewhere. I should be a Karen. Yeah. No, a Karen okay. would write the letter. Uh, facts. Oh, my God. Wait. Also, I want to ask you about your weekend. But prior to that, speaking of Karen, did you see this sort of um, scandal Millie Bobby Brown has found herself in? I have. That's a really great point. I saw the video and then I, I forgot about it, but I had feelings when I saw it. 
So Millie Bobby Brown did this like I think it's famous in the in the UK this podcast, and they were talking about how um, Millie Bobby Brown really loves to leave reviews, mostly negative ones, like at restaurants, hotels. When she feels when she's like had they, a bad experience, she lets them know. She lets them know, and she said, you know my whole life has been people critiquing me. So like, why can't I do it to others? And the internet had some thoughts on it. And I wanted to know what you thought while watching her, her speak. So I need to say that I am the opposite of her. I will never really complain about anything. Even if in the moment I'm like, I'm going to do this. Then like once the moment's over, I go, I've never left a review. I don't have an account for leaving reviews unless like someone asked me to leave a positive review about their business. Of course. Of course. Um, I just did that with my Crate and Barrel delivery five stars. So I am the opposite of her truly. Like I will accept bad service with a smile on my face. Yeah. And what she was saying didn't bother me. I agree with you. Like I'm the same as you. Uh, You could spit in my mouth and I would say thank you so much. Have an amazing day. Can't wait to come back tomorrow. I love it. Yeah. This is the best thing. It was It was. I feel better than ever. Thank you so much. So I'm the same way as you. I'm not somebody who's literally ever, even sometimes I have such a bad experience. I walk out and I'm like, I feel compelled. I'm going to write a review. I never actually do it. Like, I've, I don't think I ever have actually. The only thing I do is I will never go there again. Of course. And that's fair. So I'm the opposite as well. And I, I don't think on its face what she was saying was wrong. Like, she basically was like, I think if someone's doing something wrong, like, they should know. However, like, it being this, you know, very sort of, famous, rich, snob. Like, she sounded like a snob. I think it was the f- a fine thing to say, but coming from her, it definitely felt bizarre. Especially, she's just, like, so young. It felt like bratty. Maybe. It didn't ring as bratty. And also, it's not like she's going on her Instagram. It's not like she's writing under her name, hi, I'm Millie Bobby Brown, so very true. famous person, and you were bad. She's just trying to be, like, a regular person. And why isn't she entitled to the same rights as everyone else? She's a paying customer. That's actually fact based. That's a fact based presentation. And you, you could you presented. you could it cuts both ways. You could say, oh, because she's so privileged, she shouldn't be allowed to complain. But it's also like she's also a person, and she's entitled. She's to a paying customer. Do what, what anyone else would do. Same yeah, no, rules for fair. everyone. That's fair. I feel like the way she described it, she went up. She goes about it in the most polite way possible. And like, yeah, it's people like her who might be making service better. People who take the time to complain and to say this was wrong. In a wrong. constructive way, not if in a rude. If everyone were like us, we'd all be eating mush. It's so true. May I have some more, please? Like it's, for every Millie, there's a Jackie and I am benefiting because of a Millie. No, and it's almost like the Millies can't exist without the Jackies and the Jackies cannot exist without the Millies. Like in order for the world to remain balanced, you have to have both. It's a balance. So I have to thank her. And she has to thank you too. She has to thank me for leaving space to complain. For her. Because I hold space for the complainers. You hold space kind of for two truths too. Except on Friday night, we went out to dinner. Ooh. And I ordered my main and it was so unacceptable. Well, first, I couldn't send it back and just be like, this wasn't good. I had to make sure Olivia tried it to be like, she was like, that's oh rancid. There's an episode of Curb like that. Harry, Larry, just now, he got the key lime pie. He's like, it's disgusting. And he made the girl try it. He was on a table. She was like, it was disgusting. And the guy was like, I can't take this back. You ate half of it. But because everybody tried it. That's really funny. No, I just thought, I ordered the sea bass, which I don't usually order. I usually go for a salmon, but I was trying to sea be bass like. Sea bass is crazy. I was trying to be fancy and crazy. So I got it and it was so gross. And I'm like, oh shit, like maybe I don't like sea bass. And that's right. not their fault if they made a perfectly good sea bass. And right. I just don't have a refined enough palate to appreciate it. So I was like, Olivia, can you confirm that this is fucking disgusting and one thing about Olivia she knows a good sea bass like she's a fish girl yeah Claudia she was vomiting it was so so wrong so of course I didn't do the the sending back that's also because I was in a booth and I was on the inside so someone at the end did it just for brevity's sake if there if there are 10 times where I don't like my meal maybe once I will return it and by I I mean Ben no, it was seriously inedible. I didn't feel bad. Also, we had ordered so much food that like this one sea bass, goodbye, good day, sir. It wasn't and, gonna, you know, bankrupt the facility. No, and I didn't feel like, oh, we ordered two things and we're sending one back and we're yeah, a waste no. of your time. Context is extremely important when it comes to returning dishes. Yeah, it's all about percentages. It It's so true. So Friday night, out, you went out to dinner. Okay, socialista queen. So social. My week last week was so social. I was telling you, we like barely chatted because I was just being a social butterfly, which was really fun. Yeah, so she's she's too good for me now. She doesn't need like the crutch of her bestie on FaceTime. She has real friends in the real world. So she doesn't call. She doesn't write. We don't talk anymore. Okay, I called you last night and you couldn't get off the phone with me fast enough. I was watching Reba. Reba's a show that can wait, honestly. It's waited 30 years for you. 
that's what you think. You think Reba is a show that can wait. And I'm going to put you on. I'm going to put you all on like I did Young Sheldon. The next sitcom you need to watch, it's on Hulu, is Reba. And let me tell you, Jackie, you will love. No, I know. We watched it growing up. Friday night, WB11, Be There, Be Square. Joanna Garcia, one of my favorite actresses, is on yep. it. And of course, Reba, Barbara Jean. Like the game's all here. Steve Howie from, you know, everything, but mostly Shameless recently. He is the boyfriend. It is so good. And that fucking theme song, let me tell you, me and Ben, you think it's like after we watched 15 episodes this weekend, they're only 20 minutes, but you think after the 15th time, we'd be like, I have not pressed skipped intro at once. My roots are planted in the past, though my life is changing fast. Who I am is who I want to be. Jackie, the show is so good. The nostalgia, I feel like I think of you. I think of us like, like in the Friday playroom night, after dinner, Shabbat, like always eating our little ice creams, watching Reba. Family fun, like it's good, but it's hysterical. And it's, and you know what, I forgot kind of, it was probably in its time, like really, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Not polarizing, but you know, in the very first episode, her teenage daughter gets pregnant and Reba lets them, you know, get married and live in their house together. It was kind of probably this very forward, kind of out there show. Cause it was supposed to be like, you know, just family friendly sitcom, but it's a little crazy. Yeah, and we're lapping it up with our ice cream cones. We were trading obsessed. ice creams. Jackie, it was so good. You have to re- rewatch it. Okay, I but continue. Will. I'm sorry. So I was watching Reba, and yes, I, I needed to hang up. I so she I complains Reba. that I have too many friends and I don't call her, but then I call her. I'm like trying to chit chat with my girl. And of course, I forgot the reason that I called her, but let's net, not let that get in the way of a good combo. Okay, and wait. I want to say two things. She keeps being like, Why'd you go? Like, do you remember yet? I'm like, no, I'm just having fun at this point. Well, you weren't having fun. You were using me because like everyone was out of the house and you were doing dishes. And I know I do that too. Whenever I'm like doing something I don't want to do, I'm like, if I call someone, it will make the time go faster. So, and usually I'm down, but like I was in the middle of something and you were kind of like doing the opposite. You just like were using me and that's fine. I'd love to be used. I, I call people in the bath. Like I always call people. It's fine. But you did eventually remember why you called me. And I wanted to let you know there wasn't a package here. Huh. So that sort of closes the loop. You guys don't need to know. It was like so stupid, but you don't need to know. It was really you know, stupid. There was nothing here. That kind of hurts after everything. <laughs> after everything. Should we name them? Okay, I'll tell you what it was. This is why I called Claudia, because I got a package last night, or I don't even know. I take so long to open my packages. I I got a package from Caraway, and it was one of their big to-go food containers which we love a food storage container and on the inside it had like cookies and a celebratory note and I'll I op- read you the note because Jackie sent it to me I sent a picture to Claudia so the inside had like confetti and custom sugar cookies that had like podcast microphones and caraway like such a cute little gift and the gift was for this reason it said hi Turdy Lou this month is our anniversary on the toast and what better way to celebrate than with cookies we hope you enjoy your food storage which is perfect for Ben's leftover chili. XOXO Caraway Toasters in corporate. So cute. So, so cute. sweet. So I got it and I was like, I got Claudia's obviously, but I also know that you've sent some things here in the past. So it, it's not that shocking. Never that from they, Caraway. That they sent, actually one time I took your order. Yeah, I did. Um, but they know my address. They have my address and they sent the wrong thing to Jackie. So I was so like. Jackie was like, oh, Claudia probably got mine. No, I, I asked, did you get mine? Because I had wanted to post like this little cute thing that they sent. But like, not if they didn't send me one. You know, like that's a little sad. <laughs> so I called to ask if you got one, which you hadn't. I thought it might be in the studio. And now you're saying that it's not. So I guess I won't post the Caraway package, but I'll just talk about it on the show instead. By the way. Your move, Caraway. The thing is, Caraway can never do anything to offend me because they have changed my life in such a positive way. Like, seriously, they could spit in my face and I would say, thank you, jolly good job. Can I have some more? That's kind of the theme of today's episode, you know? Yeah, but for, with Caraway, like, my whole life is Caraway. My whole but it, life. It, it's okay to say that it stings. No, because I ate your cookies and I'm happy. So, And I have after- a container. After you went to dinner on Friday night, how was the rest of your weekend? The rest of my weekend was very good. It was a very homey weekend. I can never remember what the hell I did. Anyone else? What did I do on Saturday? I don't know. We didn't talk because you don't need me anymore. Yeah. No, we were home most of the weekend. It was like raining, pouring. Same here. So it was like a nice, cozy home weekend. Took some naps. Me too. I took one on Saturday. It was amazing. Yeah, we had like a long nap time. You never know what you're going to get around here. Tromeo peed in my bed and pooped on my floor. Classic. I'm, I'm shocked Brew didn't do such a thing. In solidarity with his bro. 
Yeah, so we were just hanging at home. Homesteading. That's great. Homesteading. Homesteading. Yeah, homestead tings. So I think that might be it in terms of we can recap, you know, catching up with the squirrelies. Anything you want to catch up on before we dive into the Fast Five? And, and how would you describe the Fast Five, perhaps in three words? They are strong. So are you. As are you. Brute That's to do. True. Rest in peace. Crunchy Angel Dora. Crunchy Angel Dora. So now without further ado, it is time for the Fast Five Stories that they are strong that you need to know. Oh, and I'm really excited because today's um, episode is sponsored by a new sponsor, but I talked about this sponsor a lot because I'm actually an investor in this company. Yeah, that's right. I invest. You guys might have heard of Built Built Rewards, the Built Credit Card, and it is for people who rent. Listen up, renters. If you ever feel like you're stuck in this loop of rent payments, rent payments, watching your money vanish into thin air, it is time to turn that rent game around and start earning some serious rewards. That is where Built Rewards comes in. So Built is breaking ground as the first rewards program that hooks you up with points on your rent. You can earn points paying rent. Even if you're still rocking old school rent check vibes, which in my last apartment I was, I had to write a check and I was like, oh, I can't use this. No, you can. Built Rewards has got your back. They will mail a check for you. It's like basically having a personal rent paying assistant. Every month, pay your rent and watch the built points roll in. You can use your points to jet off on a dream vacation, put your points towards a flight or hotel stay. They have over 500 airlines and 700,000 hotels and properties. Use your points to sweat it out. You can redeem your points to book fitness studio classes. You can also use your points towards future rent payment or towards a future down payment on a home. Built is one of those things that sounds like it's too good to be true. I've had the card for like two, three years now. It's fabulous. Earn points by paying rent when you go to joinbuilt.com slash toast. That's J-O-I-N-B-I-L-T dot com slash toast. Join BILT.com slash toast. This is going to be something that is going to change your life. And they have so many great rewards partners like airlines that you probably fly all the time. And having more points is never bad. And rent is the biggest thing you spend money on every month. So you might as well be earning points. Today's episode is also brought to you by Primally Pure. We've all been there. Achy cramps, PMS, pain, all the signs that your cycle has arrived. But what if I told you that your monthly flow could become a friend, not a period that you dread? Primally Pure has just launched their Cycle Soothing Spray, which is expertly formulated and research-backed with over 2,700 milligrams of elemental magnesium per bottle. It is a miracle mineral known to ease discomfort and soothe period systems. Their exclusive aroma blends Their exclusive aroma blend contains nine sweet and spicy essential oils with synergistic benefits that have been used for centuries to support women's health and homeostasis. Let me just say Primally Pure is a brand like now that I, they kind of saved my life. I fully respect because I got the worst sunburn of my life and everybody was telling me like you need moisturizer, yada, yada. And you know, like half the uh, moisturizers out there just feature alcohol as their number one ingredient. It's so drying. It's synthetic. It's fraudulent. Jackie, when I was at her house, gave me Primally Pure. It's literally like exactly what people were telling me. Coconut oil, shea butter. Now I'm like, oh, this brand is legit. I trust everything that they make. Yeah, it's made with real ingredients that you can pronounce, not a million of them. And I just got their new spray that's made with magnesium, which magnesium is just an amazing- A miracle. A miracle ingredient. If you're craving fewer cramps and a calmer nervous system, all you need is a cycle soothing spray from Primally Pure, period. Ha! If you're tired of discomfort during your monthly menstrual cycle, try the cycle smoothing spray from Primally Pure at primallypure.com slash toast. That's www.primallypure.com slash toast using code toast at checkout for 15% off. Get order. Thank you, Tara DeLue. An absolute honor. Our first story on Friday, Kate Middleton revealed that she has cancer and is getting chemotherapy. She says it has taken time to tell her kids. But on Friday, the Princess of Wales shared her health news um, in a personal video message, which came after Kensington Palace had announced on January 17th that the princess had undergone a planned abdominal, abdominal surgery. In her emotional video, Princess Kate started by thanking well-wishers for their wonderful messages of support amid her recovery during what has been an incredibly tough couple of months for her entire family. She said, quote, in January, I underwent major abdominal surgery in London, and at the time, it was thought that my condition was non-cancerous. The surgery was successful. However, tests after the operation found cancer had been present. My medical team therefore advised that I should undergo a course of preventative chemotherapy, and I am now in the early stages of that treatment. 
Uh, she called the news a huge shock and said that she and William have been doing everything they can to process and manage this privately for the sake of their young family. As you can imagine, this has taken time. It has taken her time to recover from major surgery in order to start her treatment. But most importantly, it has taken them time to explain everything to George, Charlotte, and Louis in a way that is appropriate for them and to reassure them that she is going to be okay. Like, I don't really need an explanation as to why she took any amount of time to tell us. Like, not my business. Uh, felt like a total like dick in like afterwards like wanted to die um so sad like so not what I thought the answer was and so um I feel like in the video she looked like so exhausted and like kind of frail like someone with cancer would and I don't know I just the whole thing made me feel like an immense sense of sadness yeah it made me feel very sad very much have a pit it's very worrisome too you know because she is in the midst of it um but it's and, not like we have like, oh, I went through this, but I'm okay now. Yeah, she's in the middle of it. It doesn't sound not serious. It, it sounds like it could actually be quite serious. The palace said that they're not going to um, reveal any more information, will not be sharing any further private medical information. The princess has a right to medical privacy, as we all do. Agreed. I mean, she already shared so much. Yeah, there's like this sort of, well, there's two things going on. I feel like when you're, I don't even know what to call her, like a, because she's Public not like a pal but she's not like a celebrity she's more than that public figure but like let's say the prime minister had some sort of illness like that I do feel like is information like everybody deserves medical privacy but that like that person should step down if they can't you know do their duties and yeah I feel like with Kate Middleton like she's not a prime minister but she's not just a celebrity and I feel like she's entitled to that sort of privacy where it's like if she needs to take time off like the nation won't suffer you know for sure, but the nation couldn't let her take time off. She couldn't even make it to Easter well, without having to announce. It really was America, by the way. Like, people in Britain were not as bent out of shape, conspiracy theorizing down, like, dark Twitter holes as much as people in America were. I agree with that, but I don't think that it was only America. I don't think they would have addressed if it was only America. A lot of things have oh. been going on here, especially as it relates to them and, like, Meghan and Harry, and they don't get bent out of shape about it. Well, there was also a bunch of news stories uh, following the announcement about Meghan and Harry and how, you know, they're devastated because they found out with the rest of the world. And when you and I were talking about him finding out about Charles's cancer with the rest of the world, it did seem like there was a, an enormous possibility that he was told prior. With Kate and William, I feel like he definitely found out like the same time as my ass did. Actually, yeah. I found out a little late. I was doing the soda method. Like I found out 30 minutes later. Yeah. I, and then I found out from you. I hadn't even seen it yet. Yeah, him and William don't speak. They do the opposite of speaking. And I feel like William, like, let's say, you know, I'm sure the immediate family knew, Charles and Camilla. I'm sure William said to Charles, like, you're not allowed to tell Harry. Like, that's how much he, they hate each other. Yeah, and also maybe they don't trust that he wouldn't in some way share. Because he's been the, such a media darling, yeah. Yeah, he loves, can't keep his mouth shut. Maybe he'll go yeah, write a book about it. That's fair, too. Um, yeah so sad like I feel like and what are the odds that both Charles and Kate, Kate would have cancer like at the same time yeah be in the it's, be in the hospital at the same time right and so I definitely still feel um that Charles probably would have shared his diagnosis regardless but I think he definitely did it also to protect Kate but I also think Charles is more of the prime minister elk than Kate like where yes his he has to health information is you know crucial Important to doing to the, the job totally so I think he would have shared either way as he should speaking of the royal family there was well as he would I don't I don't really know what's right there was footage at the end of the movie, like all the amazing things that Nicholas Winton was recognized for after basically nobody knew about it until he had this like scrapbook lying around and he didn't know what to do with it. And he like took it to this thing, this organization, and it like blew up, became a huge news story. And he ended up donating it to Yad Vashem in Israel. Um, but he um, ended up being knighted by Queen Elizabeth. And there was a video of it at the end of the movie. It was so cute. That's so cute. And then when he's he also like, like the kinder transport. That's what it was, right? So they were referencing the Kinder Transport in the movie. It had ha I'm sure the Kinder Transport like inspired him, Nicholas, yeah. to do the work that he did. But this was not considered the Kinder Transport. Oh, not the official where, one. Where was the Kinder? And you know, I was thinking about you the whole movie because that amazing statistic you told me about Paddington the Bear, which has seriously been one of my favorite facts to share with people, like of all time. Say it again. 
So Paddington the bear, as we all know him, he um, is a little we boy. We all know him with a backpack and a like a name tag around his neck, and he was inspired. Like the creator of him was inspired by the Kinder Transport because the Jewish children who were saved from Germany they came to um, the station like because he's always at like the railroad station with back like loves trains yeah he had a backpack on and a tag around his neck they the kids did too they had one backpack with them and a tag with their names and so he was inspired by those children the character of him so the kids in the movie also had a name tag and a backpack but i don't think this because it wasn't official it was this literally what was so underground thing it? yeah no i not think even the- underground this guy nicholas in his house with like his mom helena bottom carter wrote an op-ed and was like listen I'm doing this I need people to volunteer to be foster parents and to put up 50 pounds for the like immigration fee there wasn't he didn't work with the government literally he went to the immigration office every day and asked for like 20 30 uh visas Mm -hmm. and then found foster families like literally in his dining room table that was so amazing about it the government did not help at all it was just like these random people at the immigration office who let the visas through wow like in this sort of like almost shady way yeah and he was literally like mailing people pictures of the, the kids being like choose your kid send me 50 pounds i'll get you a kid it was like that's so drinking. amazing it was of those, dink. but also those families that they would have them could, but can you just imagine the parents on the other side well that and that part in the movie like i seriously could not stop crying like when it was it like wasn't even a hard decision for these parents to decide to like literally never see their kids again send them to another country on a train by themselves with a backpack and a name tag yeah yeah so the Kinder Express was from Germany to England? Yeah, I think so. Oh, my God. And then, like, the sort of worst part of the movie is that, like, the final train, um, which was their biggest transport yet, they were, like, on the train, and Hitler literally invaded Prague that day, and the train never made it, and he never knew what happened to those kids. Or, like, you know, everyone who was living in that in that um, ghetto. It was a really good movie. I really, I don't know how we got here, but everyone should see it. It was really good. And Anthony Hopkins is so cute. I love him. We got here because he was knighted by the queen. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so back to Kate. Refu Ashley Ma, seriously. So hopefully everyone will leave her the fuck alone now, perhaps? I will. I have learned my lesson. I hope, the thing is, I'm not going to pretend I was better than anybody else. Like, I got in there and I was, you know, in a nice way, I think. I wasn't being, like, rude. But I still was speculating and that's not cool. I was wrong. I will do better. I will not continue to speculate. And so I have learned my lesson. Have you? Not to be obnoxious, but you know who wasn't participating in this? Let me think. Let me think. Let me think. Elon? Like, who are you going to say? Me. Oh, yeah, we know. Oh, it just hasn't been stated yet. Like, what I Oh, I'm so sorry. Has it not? It hadn't been stated yet. What I maintained was like... You said that you believed all royal communications and people were literally like clowning on you in the comments for saying that. Yeah, that I believe what they were saying was a vague version of the truth. Those were my words. Yeah, you said... And that's exactly what it was. They're not lying. They're just not being like super detailed. Not detailed, but there was a surgery and there is a recovery. Yep. And it's a version of the truth. So... So stick with me. You were right. I was wrong. I'm dumb. You're (laughs) smart. And there's nothing you could do about it. No, I don't feel like I have to stunt on you because I know your heart was in the right place and like you weren't at the level that other people were at. I feel like I'm no, I'm stunting on others. Like I'm right. You're wrong. I'm big. You're little. And people like even after like I can I feel good knowing that once the video no no once the um her at the farmers market came out I stopped. Yeah. Other people did not. They were interviewing that you know famous impersonator like. I stopped after the the farm video and I think anybody who did it needs to seek help like for, for sure real. but there are people who are also not stopping at this point they think it was um a dead fake video which deep I fake even, deep fake I don't even know what that was but then thank you uh Twitter somebody was like trying to make a thread about how this is a deep fake video and community notes came in and said it has been verified that this is not an AI generated or a deep fake video so thank you yeah really crazy for the people who are still going on about it but I, I mean if they if they admit they were wrong like what do they have it's such a good question you know yeah they can't let it go for sure so hopefully everyone can just give her some <gasps> peace wait we didn't even talk about this is what i meant to say in the pre fast five banter how sort of major news coming out this morning 
which is a date and time for the 5k has been oh, yeah. decided on yeah um it is may 7th and it is in los angeles and there is a you know a high likelihood that your girls cannot go just due to travel schedules things like that things of that nature i really thought it was going to be much closer to new york and florida like texas where all the podcasters live yeah i thought it was going to be in austin and we were prepared for that right but i'm not prepared so, for to go to los angeles to run a 5k and like for for nothing else really yeah so um I'm I I am gonna try and go like I really am you are but there's a possibility like neither of us go and I've been training for nothing I'm calling it that I not trying to go unless you know for some reason we need to be there for something um unless somebody wants to you know book us but I don't think you were you've been training for nothing I think this has been so great for us yes and I actually kind of love being a runner I'm going I have to run today and then I'm going for a run with my coach in the park tomorrow and I just run past these bitches like these lazy slobs and I'm like oh my god you guys wish you were me like I just know everybody in the park's looking at me being like oh my god she's gorgeous she's gliding she's in shape like I I'm people say there's like a runner's how you get addicted to running you don't I get addicted to the attention you know to what people must be thinking of me to yeah. the accolades because I know what I think when I see a beautiful woman running I you know I would think in the past like oh my god I'm so jealous she's gorgeous she's a gazelle she's a model I would think all these things now I am the model I am the gazelle and I can only imagine what people must think when they see me like looking adorable and I always come straight from the toe so I'm always wearing makeup like it, it is addicting you know that's my favorite kind of high all the world's a stage for Turdy. To run across. Well, I think that's good. I think net net, it's been great. Great for the content, great for the health. Like really just an overall um, positive way, influence. You sound conclusive. Like I'm leaving the door much, very much open. Like I might go. Yeah. I think you should it, leave it, it more It could open not be me. less convenient timing. No, 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 no. Or location if they tried. Like they almost went out of their way to not consult us, you know? Not that I'm like being a victim or anything, but. Yeah. But maybe they were like, these girls like made it their thing and we need to we cut them out. We gotta get rid of we them. We gotta do totally. it as far from where they'll fly as possible. Totally. And they know we're like, we don't go within like, out of like a hundred mile radius of our homes. Yeah. So that's that. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story? Some sweet news. Sweet? Sweet. Cameron Diaz and Benji Madden secretly welcomed baby number two and are revealing his name. Oh, I so didn't know that. I know the pair surprised fans Friday night by announcing they recently welcomed their second child, a son named Cardinal. We are blessed and excited to announce the birth of our son, Cardinal Madden. He is awesome and we are all so happy he is here. For the kids' safety and privacy, we won't be posting any pictures, but he's really cute, they said. So by the way, we'll get into Cameron Diaz in a moment. There is this sort of renaissance happening on social media. I've seen it happen a lot on TikTok where people who have previously shared, you know, their children are like family channel vibes. They are saying like making big declarations that they are not sharing their children anymore and there's sort of been this and I really saw it a lot on TikTok but I'm seeing it everywhere this trend movement to like take kids off the internet I, I was surprised because a lot of people you know it's easier to make money work with brands like I get it um I've been seeing a lot of it so their family channels like that's what they were posting and now they're turning into like mom channels instead you know and are they deleting the old content or just like going forward I've seen a mix of both. Like primarily it was this girl. I remember like during COVID, she started going out on TikTok. She, she was like, I'm pregnant with twins from a one night stand. And she took everybody on this whole journey and her kids, Violet and Scout, she did it all by herself. It was like really amazing. And she showed them, they were so cute twins. She would be like feeding three kids at once. Like it was really crazy. Um, and people became obsessed. Like she has millions of followers. And then like a year ago, she slowly started deleting every old video of the kids of the kids. And then when she finally got up to current date, she made a video being like, I'm not sharing the kids anymore. And people were like so mad at her. She was really the first to do it. People were so mad at her in such an unhinged way. Um, and now I've started to see more people do it because there's been a lot of backlash specifically around this one. Have you heard of this kid, Ren? No. W-R-E-N. So she's like one of the biggest, like her mom basically like makes TikToks of her. Like, I don't even know if the mom's ever in the content. And it's always like stuff like I probably wouldn't share. There's nothing wrong with it. But it, you know, you know how similar to like in that Quiet On Set documentary where like on its face, it's like fine. Yeah. But, but if you look from like a different angle. If a angle. freak finds it. Yeah. 
And so somebody like a couple of months ago did this deep dive on like the engagement on this girl's uh, page and how videos where, you know, she's like in a bathing suit or, you know, doing gymnastics or something have like insane amount of saves. That's like when you like favorite something almost. Yeah. Like you don't like it, but it, it goes to a folder in your... Yes, yeah, so you can look at it later. And how so many of the followers on this account were like, you know, men. And it started this huge conversation about Ren. Save Ren, 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 Ren. And the mom like doesn't care. And all this information that like people... And people have really started to like send her hate being like stop yeah um she she doesn't stop it's really crazy and it started this this conversation i think a lot of other parent channels and family channels saw it and have started to second like second guess their yeah their social content and so cameron diaz now follow and this is a thing some celebrities have always done for like not for any other reason than their own privacy but on the internet like you really have to think long and hard about where you know this content might end up yeah and I've also seen recently like a new concern is AI using images of your children. They can like age your children and, and also like use their voice for stuff. Um, and there's just like a lot of nefarious usages. Nefarious usages for sure. So I just both keep your like eye out because I've been seeing and, a lot. Both known and unknown. You know, because this AI thing is like kind of new. It's like if, if it yeah. was a few years ago, you wouldn't have ever expected something like that. Right. Yeah. That's very interesting. I hadn't um, I hadn't seen that. I guess I don't follow a lot of family creators. Yeah, like family channels. And like people are now saying like don't follow family channels. Like don't feed the sort of cycle of rewarding people for sharing, you know, their kids and like details of their kids' schedules and their outfits. Like it's really personal. Yeah. Yeah. I don't agree with it. I hate to be like judgmental, but I am. Yeah. I feel like some things are just clear, you know? Yeah. Yeah. That's so like, sorry. Not to make Cameron Diaz about something totally else. So happy for her. Yeah. Another, another bebe. She, I think prior to having her first baby, like struggled a lot fertility wise. And I just love her. Her. I feel like once a quarter we sit down and we talk about Cameron Diaz and we say the same thing every time, but it needs to be said. And I feel like it's more and more recently. I feel like she took a, a bit of a break, but now she like has her wine business, which like she leaves her to Instagram to make content. She leaves her like bubble once a quarter now because of her Aveline wine company. And I'm grateful because that means we're getting content. She's been doing, you're right, like cooking stuff and some random interviews. Yeah. And it's great. I love her, like truly. Yeah. So Mazel Tov to them. Mazel Tov. And they're just a great couple. And they're one of part of like one of my favorite celebrity webs, you know? Of course. Because like when they randomly were at Sophia Richie's wedding, like of course it made sense. Joel and Benji, Benji and N Nicole Richie. Like I love. Yeah. Are you ready for our next story, which is kind of crazy? Our next story, which is kind of crazy. Is it number three? It's number three. I'm ready. Rebel Wilson is revealing the A-list oh asshole yeah. who allegedly tried to threaten her over her memoir. So what, Rebel Wilson is naming names one week after teasing the massive asshole she writes about in her upcoming memoir, Rebel Rising. She revealed the celeb in question. So first she um, it's posted to reveal on, something like no one was asking for because no, I think come out yet. I think she was. So there's like a bit in her book. But hasn't um, come out yet. It hasn't come out yet. And she had said like this person has hired uh, that this person is an asshole in Hollywood that she was going to write about in her book. Um, she said, I wrote about an asshole in my book. Now said asshole is trying to threaten me. He has hired crisis PR manager and lawyers. He's trying to stop press coming out about my book, but the book will come out and you will all know the truth. The asshole that I am talking about in one chapter of my book is Sasha Baron Cohen. So the two of them starred in one of his movies together. It was called oh. Grimsby. They play a couple. Okay. Um, I think it's like, you know, just like a nutty fucking movie of his. It's, by the way, and with Rebel Wilson, like it sounds hysterical. Yeah, honestly, it kind of does. And the asshole behavior from the book hasn't been revealed yet. Right. A spokesperson for Sasha Baron Cohen told Page Six, quote, while we appreciate the importance of speaking out, these demonstrably false claims are directly contradicted by extensive detailed evidence, including contemporaneous documents, film footage, and eyewitness accounts from those present before, during, and after the production of Grimsby. Wait, it sounds like 
like Sasha's going to sue her because if he has all that evidence, it sounds like he's going to sue her. Evidence and he's hiring lawyers and he's trying to, I guess he was trying to get like the book to stop from coming out if what she's saying is like defamatory and untrue. She said the book's still coming out. So I guess if it comes out and he's, she's defaming him and if he says like these things aren't true and he's going to prove it, like are they going to court? But the thing is up until this point, he would have had no case because she never named him. Calling, like, it's like, you know, giving someone a nickname in the book. However, this Instagram story she just posted saying the asshole is Sasha Baron Cohen just gave him a full legal case. Yeah, maybe in the book she did name him, like, but the book hasn't come out yet. Oh. Like, maybe oh, we so would have found out anyway. from the book anyway, because I feel like how can you talk about the movie without us knowing who it was? I feel like it's a very specific thing. And, you know, Rebel Wilson was in the news like a couple of years ago for winning a major defamation case in Australia. So she's very familiar with the law. Yeah, because that statement, like, he's not fucking around. No, no. And that statement kind of makes me believe him. Like, you don't I, you, know. you don't deny so egregiously and offer up every, all the evidence that you have if somebody's speaking truths. Yeah, you kind of just... No, not to make don't everything about make, me. Add light to it. I did actually meet Sasha Baron Cohen once in person and he was like disarmingly nice. Now that doesn't mean that he's nice to everyone, but I did. So I just wanted to share. And that. I'm sure like those I just movies, wanted to say that like I met him, you know. You met him in person? Yeah. Yeah. And then we were on that Zoom call together that I spoke about, but. I'm sure those movie sets are like chaotic. Those are nutty movies. Yeah. You know, so even looking at stills, pictures from the set, it's just like, it looks like wrong, you know. Yeah. I do want to say I would be interested in re reading Rebel Wilson's memoir. Honestly, now, obviously, my interest has peaked because I need to know what the accusations are. But when I think about her career at a glance, like, yeah, I think that's a person whose memoir I would want to read. She's had such an interesting, like, couple of years. Yeah, and she's also a funny person. So right. I feel like that also usually translates to being an interesting writer. Yeah, yeah. And she's like a, a like a true, like, comic. So I bet it would be funny. And her memoir is called Memoirs of a Rebel. No, Rebel Rising is actually an amazing name for it. I like it. Rats. <laughs> Memoirs you know, of a Rebel. Do you know Rebel Wilson's sister's name? Should I? No, I was just asking if you did. No. Because like, obviously her parents are into like, you know, different yeah, li names. Yeah. Liberty. Huh. Yeah. Would you rather be Rebel or Liberty? <sighs> well... I think Liberty because like you could have cute like nicknames Lib Libby yeah they're both you know different yeah so anyways that's the latest beef in Hollywood that's the latest and greatest yeah are you ready for our next story if it's the next story that's brought to you by Sonos the Sonos mm. move to so the all new Move 2 is a powerful and portable smart speaker for listening all around your home and beyond. Connect it to Wi-Fi at home or Bluetooth for listening on the go and stream music, podcasts, audiobooks from all your favorite services. Move 2 tunes itself like magic, so it sounds great whether you're listening inside or outdoors. And don't worry about the elements, this powerful and durable speaker weathers sun, splashes, sand, and accidental drops with ease. Jax can speak to that. I know your Sonos has been outside for a couple of weeks now. Any, any reports? We're only to report that it's an amazing device that has been life changing and so wonderful. And the way that hot dog sounds coming through the speakers is unlike anything else. I have three move to speaker speakers all throughout my house and I walk from room to room and something about, I don't know, I'm not going to claim to understand like how they do what they do. You would never know where the speaker is. It sounds like I have built in speakers into my wall and like surround sound and I don't. I love it. And you should too. Visit Sonos.com and save 20% on select speakers and sound bars, including the Move 2, now through March 25th or while supplies last. I do also have a sound bar. I feel like Sonos is, speakers is a thing that you invest in. Like you go to the best and Sonos is the best. You get what you pay for. You so can hear the difference. You can truly hear the difference. Visit Sonos.com and save 20% on select speakers and sound bars, including the Move 2, now through March 25th or while supplies last. Today's episode is also brought to you by Bolin Branch. Bolin Branch makes the softest, most breathable bedding you'll ever feel. And right now you can take 20% off everything during their best sale of the entire season. So that's 20% off their buttery soft sheets, blankets, cloud-like duvets, and so much more. They're made with the highest quality, 100% organic cotton, and they are yours to try with a 30-night worry-free guarantee. 
I posted a picture of my bed and I got so many questions about my bedding. So my fitted sheet, my pillowcases, my duvet insert, and my duvet cover are all from Bolin Branch. I recently got a new color. I'm like over the stark white. I went for the natural color. It's so, it like, let me tell you, it changed like the whole vibe of my entire home. People keep making comments about my bedding. Their signature sheets, which is what I have, are the perfect way to start upgrading your sleep. They are the best-selling sheets. They feel incredible on night one, and they get softer and softer for years to come. They are made with the rarest 100% organic cotton. They are completely free from toxins, and they feel buttery soft yet super breathable, so they're perfect for the warm months ahead. They're loved by millions of sleepers. They have over 11,000 reviews, and they offer the 30-night worry-free guarantee so you can wash, style, and sleep in your sheets for an entire month, and if you don't love them, you can send them right back. They have 14 different colors and also sizes twin up to california king they're designed for all sleepers to feel incredible and you will too so sleep better with the softest most breathable bedding from bowling branch during their best sale of the entire season you can get 20 percent off your order when you use code toast at bowlandbranch.com this is their biggest deal so bowling branch is b-o-l-l-a-n-d branch.com promo code toast for 20 percent off your order exclusions apply see site for details great thank you claudia honor and honor our next story, Taylor and Travis were spotted on a lunch date in L.A. at Nobu Malibu after returning home from a Bahamas vacation. So the two went to Nobu Malibu, had a seaside lunch after vacation in the Bahamas, apparently. And do we have any details about where they were in the Bahamas? Not not that I'm seeing. I didn't. I saw like one picture of them that could have been them in the sea. Yeah, no. Yeah, I saw that, too. And then on a dock, it's not much. I don't know why, like, them going to Nobu Malibu is so crazy to me. Because like, it's one of, like, the most photographed restaurants, like, everyone there. It's, like, not, I don't want to say private. thirsty, but it's, like, if you don't want to be seen, like, you wouldn't go there. It's a place where you're okay being seen. There is a permanent paparazzi, like, group who stand outside. So, and I don't know why, I just feel like that restaurant is very much Kardashian domain, even though, like, you can't own a restaurant. Yeah, but if one could, like, they are always there. Scott is always there. Like, every single one of them. And because it's because it's in Malibu, which I think is, like, halfway between, like, L.A. proper and Calabasas, where they live. Now, don't quote me on that, because you know I know nothing about L.A. And it's just a fabulous place with fabulous food and fabulous people. No wonder, like, yeah. the paparazzi's always outside. I feel like, on the one hand, people might want privacy, but on the other hand, like, they've got to get some Toro. No, and the food is so good, yeah. Yeah. And I feel like we can't talk about Nobu Malibu without talking about my comedy special where I tell the story of like probably one of the craziest things that's ever happened to me and it happened to me at Nobu Malibu. Um, so you can stream my comedy special. It's called Lean In and it's available on Prime Video US and Canada. Yeah. Um, they looked great. They're both like kind of in their off season. He's off from the NFL. She has this month off and it's just so nice. You know, they're going on vacation and having lunch as two normal people would. Yeah. Looked cute. Looks cute. Yeah. Yummy. I'm hungry. Um, what are you going to have for lunch? Mm, I kind of went off the rails a little bit on my diet this weekend. I just decided like I needed, I needed like a cheat day or two because I've been so good. And so I was like, you know what? I'm going to just kind of enjoy myself this weekend. So I'm back on the grind today. I think I'll have a rotisserie chicken for lunch. I picked one up from the Kosher Mart yesterday. Oh, yum. I do have fresh grilled chicken that I made and maybe I'll get a tailored farms, put it on top. Love that. I was actually looking for tailored farms at the kosher grocer and I couldn't find it. So I need them to work on that. But I need both the kosher grocer and tailored farms to get to it. Is tailored farms kosher? I don't know. But like, why wouldn't it be? Right. It's lettuce. Right. Mm -hmm. If you need a mashkiach, I know a good one, Taylor. Our fifth and final story is coming in two parts because it's some Vanderpump rules news. Some Vanderpump headlines this weekend. First of all, Ariana Maddox bought a $1.6 million home in LA after her post-split real estate battle with her ex, Tom Sandoval. So Ariana recently purchased a home in the Hollywood Hills. Page Six has exclusively learned. The insider says Ariana has fallen in love with this home and is excited for the next chapter. Now, so there's photos of her walking with moving boxes. Is that her moving into this new home? I don't know, because those photos looked like... Um Old? Remember, remember like days after Scandal, the paparazzi were just standing outside their house and like every time they did anything. I thought that photo was from there. It's not clear whether that's a recent photo or just like they needed a photo of her with like a moving box to make it. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's unclear. I feel like even if she just bought the home, she wouldn't be moving like today. Right. So TBD, I'm so but relieved like and honestly, she's moving from the valley to Hollywood Hills. Like it's an upgrade in terms of neighborhood. The house is super cute. Like I've had enough of this like house saga for like this losery, like uh, cookie cutter 
home like there's nothing special about it get out like imagine having to live with him like get out yeah no i this is best for her personal journey like you need to cut the cord enjoy your new man like not be going from hotel to hotel and this home looks beautiful i'm, I'm very happy for her and it's time me it's time like it was time it's been time yeah it's been time also fifth and final story Vanderpump Rules News part two is Lala was speaking out on her Instagram Q&A about where she stands in her relationship with Katie so someone oh, oh what did you see I saw that she was like going through um, her list of baby names and they were like nutty as hell <laughs> like oh no I want to do that too but wait so on her question box someone said because on Watch What Happens Live with Katie Andy hinted that you two aren't cool with each other and Lala responded saying, I'm sure if I go back to being miserable, we'll get real thick again. Contemplated not posting this because I love her mom. Sorry, Ter. So sh she's saying they're not oh friends. Oh my God. That's and like a crazy way to say it. Yeah. Um, That's kind I, of been percolating this season though. And even in one of her interviews la on last week's episode, she said, um, she said something to this effect, though she said it kindly because she wanted to save her relationship with Katie. But she was like, you know, what like when Katie and I were really close when something to the effect of like you know when we were just like kind of mad about everyone and everything but she was like I have to let that anger go unless I want to end up like a, a old bitter. bitter bitch yeah no and actually like on its face these two are so different now like the people that we currently know like Katie's very much in this like rebuilding phase of her life and sort of just like not giving a fuck and I feel like you know Lala's trying to let go of all this like toxicity that she had in her year in her life for so many years so um the way she phrased it is a little harsh but like I do see what she's saying and and these two I feel like in this moment like are not meant to be friends yeah I feel like when they were really close it was kind of like the cast was getting like nutty and it was just like the two of them being some of like the more OG and just united in that but I also feel like people hander handle like grudges and maybe like anger differently and I feel like Katie's the sort of person it's like cross me and we're done and it's like yeah. I'm not holding on to anger I just want nothing to do with you whereas I feel like with Lala when she has a grudge against someone like it manifests she has to let go of the whole thing or else it will just make her angry so she can't be angry period and I do want to say like I actually think these two not getting along is really good for the show yeah it's interesting yeah it is because there's so many different dynamics at play, especially Ariana. And I like Sheena is such a, you know, wants everyone to be happy with her. And she really does want to be close. With, even though Katie has been awful to her for some reason, like she still always wants to work on her relationship with Katie. And so somebody who's like always wanting to have resolution, like is a little boring for television, but like Lala and Katie going against one another, like that's something I'd like to see. Yeah. So that I think that at the reunion, things got heated between them. And also I was seeing there's maybe also drama between Lala and Ariana. Yes, they said at the reunion it got so bad between Lala and Ariana. Like, it's irreparable. That's what... And these are just, like, blogs and Twitter people, like, saying that. But, like, they ex like they were fighting for so long. The production went over by an hour. And it was because Lala and Ariana, like, were at each other's throats. Like, never come... This is what they said. Never to be come, come back from. I just want to say everything can be come back from on reality, reality TV. Because you're forced to work things out and still be in the same room with this person. So you absolutely have to move on at some point. No, it's true. Like even now with Sandoval, I'm like, like well, we're coming. A good point. No, like we are slowly coming back. And like after even months slash years of this, like it will be his part of the history books. It's true. It's true. Because think back to like Jack's Stassi and Kristen, like the craziest thing. That show went on to film for like eight more years together. And now that's like, ha ha. Right. Like it's a part of Bravo history. Yeah. And this will will be too. Yeah. Anyways. Very, oh, so some of the names that were on the list that people were oh. just like couldn't get over. And she had crossed some out that I think are still in contention. And so the ones that she were sharing were the ones that she had considered but were no longer real options. And one of them was Rampage. And she was like, I thought it would be cute to call him Ram. Which I think is so crazy because it's so close to Rand. Yeah. And the other one was Snow. Oh, that's a cute name. Yeah. And there were some others on there, but people Wait, were just kind of shook. I'm trying to find the... Okay, yeah. <laughs> you find it? Names. Snow. I like that. Mighty. That's not a name. That's an adjective. That's not a name. Lion. Also not a name. That's like wolf. Right. Oh, that must have been the inspiration. I like wolf still. 
I like Wolf still too. And then she said, I liked Rampage for a boy and call him Ram. No one else was down, LOL. These were a few names I threw around. The blacked out ones are the ones I'm still thinking on. So right. the ones that she's showing us are out of the running, but they were in the running at one point. Lion, Snow, Rampage, and Mighty. I don't think they're that crazy for Hollywood. Rampage is nutty. But nutty. she wasn't going to do it. She didn't do it. And like Ocean is, it's not common, but it's, it's not the craziest no, name. It's like Hollywood, but it's lovely. Yeah, yeah. What are all the Vanderpump kids' names? Summer Moon. Summer Moon. Well, Summer is a normal name. Yeah, I like Summer Moon. Yeah, we have Ocean. Yeah. We have... Uh, Cruz What's, and Hartford. Cruz and Hartford. Is Cruz couchy? Yeah. Okay, Cruz, Hartford, and Mercer. Mercer, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think they're Cruz all lovely. They're all like not common names, but they're all lovely. There's yeah, not they like all a like flop. Fit, they fit the profile of like the family they come from. Yeah, like, they do. Summer Moon is so Sheena Marie Shea. Like, yeah. Love. Um, okay, so those are the fast five. I really Moral enjoyed. of the story is it's hard to name human beings. It's literally the craziest thing that we do as people. Yeah, it is. It really is. And you don't appreciate it like until you're in it. It's huge. Huge. Crazy, crazy thing. That is our show, you guys. Happy Monday. Hope everybody, you know, rises and grinds. And by the time you finish listening to this, like it's definitely lunchtime. So go do that. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to the toast. Or unless like you listen to this episode on your lunch break, in which case, like I'm so sorry, you have to return to work. But like the day's almost over. Time for snack. Time for snack. Thank you so much for listening to the Toast and Lenny Morning Show where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching this on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere podcasts can be found. So that's Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Radio, iHeartRadio, CastBox, all the places. So wherever you listen to podcasts, find us at Toast, leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Hope you guys have an amazing, gorgeous Monday, and we'll see you tomorrow. Love ya. Bye. <laughs> 